In the tunnel. In the tunnel. In the tunnel. You're listening to In the Tunnel. Hello and welcome to In the Tunnel, episode number 38. Uh, I kind no, of would have I don't have a numbers joke. I don't have a numbers <laughs> joke for this one. I kind of would have liked to get to this one a little earlier last week, but life got Oops. in the way. What about Oops. you? Uh, I'm sure I could come up with an excuse, but why bother? <laughs> I and, That's uh, my reason. That's my reason. All right, so uh, without further ado, let's just jump into it. First topic, NHL playoffs. Right now, Columbus and Boston are tied. Uh, I'm not really that surprised given how Columbus kind of manhandled Tampa. Uh, I mean, I expect this to be a good series. I'm more surprised that both games have gone into overtime. Yeah, um, I, I can agree with that. I, you know, still a little bit kind of surprised with how Columbus has handled success uh, in the playoffs because, you know, having never won a round before, obviously th- they've carried some momentum into the second round. I just didn't see that that momentum or that flame was really going to carry much more of a spark after that. But then again, it's only been two games. It could very well be that it's burnt out and they lost, you know, they won the, uh, their last game. We really don't know yet. It, it really is something that we'll figure out in time. It's, I don't know. It, it's been an interesting series that, you know, if you're looking at it on paper and with prior historical playoff trends in mind, you think that it's Boston's to lose. I mean, in that, like, Boston now with Toronto out of the way has, like, the clearest path. I mean, but... with prior historical playoff trends in mind, Columbus shouldn't even be here. So, well, yeah, that, that's exactly what I'm let's saying. Let's just throw those historical trends out the window. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's why. But, like, that's the thing is we base everything off of something that's already happened. It's the whole concept of you make your own history, but the fact of the matter is the history that's already there is what you base your actions off of. True, but I mean, this team is so new to basically the playoffs and definitely the second round. that Yeah, but a lot of their core has been on that team Mm -hmm. for a long time. Yeah, true, true. I'll agree with that. That's definitely true. There's nothing to disagree with there. I'm so glad you agree with me, Sean. <laughs> uh, okay. I mean, I do think it'll be an interesting series. I don't think, like, either team will just fall over. I mean, you might not, we might not get, like, a a seven-game series, but definitely, I mean, definitely five at this point. I'm seeing six, you know, no problem. I'm seeing six or seven. Actually, no, I'm going five or six. Okay, well, I'm going to go with six. Um... Just because I think in that rare occasion where the Jackets have won their last game, or even if the Bruins have won their last game, it wouldn't surprise me in this playoff full of like just wild patterns that one of these teams just reels off three more wins and takes the series already. Yeah, I okay, so... I mean, everything that's looked to be like, oh, it should be this way has in the NHL postseason this year turned out to be the other way. Vegas had the Sharks, you know, you know, 3-1, and then the Sharks are in the second round. Uh, the Avalanche beat the first seed. The Blue Jackets beat the first seed. 
I mean, Islanders with the sweep lost. is like all these things that you wouldn't expect to happen the way that they did. Mm-hmm. Even if they're only to some extent, like when I was saying the Islanders swept is like, yeah, you probably weren't expecting a sweep. And that was probably the extent of the surprise factor yeah. in that series. But like every series has had some kind of, you know, this is what happened. Nashville lost to Dallas. St. Louis won their series. Is It's been a lot of underdog stories. And I mean, in terms of seating, not necessarily in terms of style of play or balance and matchup, but true. I'll agree with that. I mean, yeah. so what do you think of the Avalanche and Sharks series then? I mean, it, it's been an interesting one so far just because, you know, the Avalanche, didn't they have a, a pretty sizable comeback last night? Uh, I mean, I could be wrong. No, they scored their. I did not watch. Okay, I didn't watch Game of Thrones either. So, (laughs) I mean, we're not here to talk about Game of Thrones. I mean, they did. I've never watched it, so. Yeah, they. I mean, they played. No desire to. The games were really good, in my opinion. All right, So. so no, no big comeback story, but yeah, that that is a split series now. So, um, I mean. That one, it, it, unlike the other series, uh, Boston and Columbus, it's a little bit harder to gauge, um, you know, where that series is at because it's regulation wins. It hasn't been uh, necessarily the tightest of games, you know, back and forth throughout, you know, okay. both games. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like... Boston and Columbus are just playing each other so much tighter right now to where mm-hmm. it, that's kind of formulated when we say that you could see it going either way. I still don't know with the Avalanche and the Sharks yet. Okay. I need to see more, plus the Sharks are kind of hitting, getting like thrown around physically in the last series and more into this one. So, mm-hmm. you know, I think they're going to need some bodies back that they don't have right now. All right, what do you think about Dallas and the Blues then? I mean, that I mean, I got that on right now. It's another series that is tied 1-1. I just don't you know where that one goes yet. I mean, the games have These been are pretty two teams. Close. Yeah, but these are two teams that at the beginning of the playoffs I wasn't expecting uh either to win a series, but I Dallas, mean... I don't take them seriously ever. <laughs> Yeah, and the Blues, like, they were pretty bad at the All-Star break, and they have been ramping pretty hard. Yeah. So, I mean, this, again, this series is looking to be great, and the only series without both teams having a win so far is Carolina and the Islanders. What do you think about that one? This is what I've been saying for, I think I said it before last round, this is the ultimate difference between the Nassau Coliseum home ice advantage and the Barclays Center home yeah. ice advantage. And that we- building is not built for hockey. The Nassau Coliseum, your voice is heard, and everybody's sitting right above the ice, even up in the nosebleeds. And in so Barclays Center, you got an SUV behind the ice. It, it, it's a difference in atmosphere. And while the Islanders, you know, they know that their fans have been showing up, it's just a little bit different now. And you go down 0-2. I mean, what do you think and, of Barry Trotz is saying? They played, they played, they just played really well for 48 seconds. That's what he said. After that, of the game. whole game, of the whole game too, they played good for forty eight seconds. They played really well for forty eight seconds. They were very good for forty eight seconds. What do you think of that? Sounds this, about he's right. Talking about Carolina. Oh, Carolina. Yeah. No. Obviously, no. they scored their two goals in forty eight seconds in the third period. That's why. Well, no, because I'll, I'll say it like this: the Islanders' offense has kind of been crap. Yeah. I mean, I, was I agree. It? How many goals in the first two games for the Islanders? They've had 
one goal in two games. Yeah, and that one goal was an own goal. Yep. So, mm-hmm. so I mean that I mean you're on your home ice and can't put the puck in the net. I mean, to be fair, and you're like, going to say how the other team hasn't played well. I mean, to be fair, both teams are playing like pretty bad, but that's not to say that. You can't just say that Carolina only played really well for 48 seconds. That's not the case. No, and even if so, you still lost, and you can't justify that as a head coach that way. Right. Because it's like those are the 48 seconds that, you know, you Mm -hmm. lost it. So you can't justify a loss like that. Right. I mean, and but this also shows that difference that you were talking about with the Barclays Center and the Nassau Coliseum. Right, but – uh, let me just say it's situational. Those kind of comments. If you're up three nothing in the series and you lose the first game, and you say that, that's fine because situationally, you're up. You no, know, I mean, still the commanding lead in that series. But I, I when think, you're down o two and say that, that's kind of uh no. But you even if they were winning these games, you could tell because to be fair. Like, they could have won the last game. Again, I think it was bad plays on the Islanders' part for those for that minute. But it was still... They, Carolina still played really well. But well, Carolina still got more than one goal, though. Yeah, but it's they could have won that game. And I would still be saying there is a complete difference between... Barclay Center and Nassau Coliseum, and I'm not a fan of either team. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not that again. We're not fans of either team, so it's like us saying it's different. It depends on how Isles fans are using it to justify what's going on. I'm just saying that I notice it. Oh yeah, absolutely. Which I think is a fair point. Yeah, so I mean, the series is heading back to Raleigh with basically half the checkers lineup, which is the uh, Carolina AHL team. How do you think it's going to mm-hmm. go? I mean, could it really get any worse? They just I keep mean, to waiting. be fair, yes, it can. <laughs> uh, I mean, it, they played with this next man up mentality seemingly throughout all their injuries so far. Which... I mean, they can get either a 2006 Cam Ward from the goalie they just called up, or they can just all flop because they're playing with like 10 AHLers. There's nothing wrong with 2006 Cam Ward except for the fact that he's. Dude, it's not he, 2006. He ripped it in the playoffs. That, that was his rookie year. He came in in the playoffs and he was a god, basically. Yeah, but it's not 2006 anymore. Unfortunately, you would think that it is. <laughs> uh, good 13 years off. Mm, don't tell people in Raleigh. Eh, well, at least they're in the playoffs this year still. Well, yeah, that that's kind of the point. All right, so you want to just get to the next? Sure, but I'm on a little bit of a tape delay, so you're going to have all right, so uh, we brought back the wheels this time. I'm super happy, and we're going to be doing wheels for the NHL end of year awards, end of season awards. It's award season, right? Bring so at the pageantry, everybody dress nicely, and then realize that you're sitting at home on your couch. Right. So Why anyway, you dress up, you damn moron. The wheel decided to give Nikita Kucherov above a 55% chance and Connor McDavid somewhere around 35. The wheel did this all by itself. I in no way, shape, or form was an influencing party in it. <laughs> I just want to disclose that right away. All right. I mean, I guess we'll see what the wheels did for the next one then if we didn't influence it at all. so I didn't influence it. Maybe the wheel has a religion. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, Do boy. you pray to the wheel? Or does the <laughs> wheel pray to you? The wheel's accepting donations on Venmo. <laughs> which is like a church, except not. <laughs> anyway, so you ready to see what the wheel thinks? I've never been more excited in my life, Sean. And 
<laughs> Why don't you tell me a story while it's spinning? Um, I mean, I don't really have a story to tell you aside from oh, the that's, fact that that's wildly disappointing. <laughs> Nikita Kucherov won. I guess the wheel was just biased enough. All right. Yeah. Well, kind of by like mathematical probabilities, but yeah. Yeah, I mean... It was definitely not pre-engineered to be biased. I mean, yeah, and, like, I I don't think McDavid deserves the Hart Trophy anyway. His team went nowhere. But he deserves him more than Crosby. I mean, Crosby still made the playoff. Okay. Crosby only put up 100 points, though. So... Yeah, you can be McDavid I mean, and put up that much, no, that many numbers with Mc, nothing to show for it. I mean, he's a finalist, so obviously there's something to show for it. True, true. But I mean, he's gonna be a finalist. He's just he's that good where he's gonna be a finalist, even though he doesn't deserve the Hart Trophy. Right, but that's kind of what Crosby had this year. Yeah, but it, uh, like. I mean, so you're saying if if Kucherov wasn't there, you'd give it to McDavid over Crosby? I think if Kucherov wasn't there, the odds would be a little bit different. It would be like one and a half, one, just off of statistical performance to McDavid. But because didn't we sit here last year? Di- it's not. Yeah, it's but not- didn't we sit here last year and say that these awards are based on regular season? Yeah. So, but, for, I mean, in, in that in mind, yeah. Getting your team to the playoffs is part of being the... But still, it's a regular season award. True, true. Okay. So, I mean, agree to, dis- to disagree, but that's where I stand on this. All right. Anyway, uh, moving on. Next one. So, the Calder... Um, hey, it looks like the wheel decided to be completely even in this one. Yeah, it, it decided to do that for the rest of them because the wheel didn't have a lot of time to be creative tonight. Oh, okay. So any thoughts on these players yeah. before the wheel decides if we are smart? I don't know or... who Bennington is. Don't know who Bennington is? I mean, I'd give it to Pedersen or Dalin anyway. Yeah. So by process of elimination, all the real people... <laughs> anyway, let's see what the wheel says. Watch it. Do us spinning too. Uh, I mean, it's almost a guarantee. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it's the Chicago State theory all over again. Oh boy. <laughs> hey. Go Chicago State Cougars. I mean, I guess the wheel has spoken, <laughs> but I would have rather seen it in Pedersen or Dolan's possession next year they can't win the calder next thank, year thank you sean thank you for <laughs> God. God. i do this just to get those reactions out of you yeah but you knew it was an easy joke yes anyway i'm so proud of you sean you've come so far in life <laughs> Moving on. Uh next ru- next award is the Selk Selkie? I can't Selkie. pronounce it. Selkie. It's like selfie, but you oh. know, more more masculine. Alright, so who you got in this one? Bergeron, O'Reilly, or Stone? Uh I'm going Bergeron. Any reason? Because O'Reilly is on uh is a candidate for another award, and Mark Stone, I don't know why he's on a list. All right. There you go. I mean, Mark Stone's not having the most amazing year. At least I didn't think he was. Uh, I guess yellow just has a, the, is the color of the wheel today, because... Yeah. <laughs> Bergeron been, won, though, so I guess you're right. I guess it's been the wheel agrees with you. color in a lot of what I've done. Uh, Yeah. Yes, the wheel agrees with me because I prayed to the wheel beforehand. Okay, then why didn't I mean, it agree with you? Well, well, well hold on. We, we did our, before we hopped on our pre-show video chat to discuss, it was just me on, you know, on the floor praying beside my bed. I'll hail the wheel. Let me be right. Shit like that. I don't, you know, I'm bullshit. Anyway. Uh, yeah, the wheel does 
I mean, if the wheel is the first person thing to like me, then we're having a good day. You know, okay. we'd, we, we'd prefer I don't know that, where that was going, but okay. We, we'd prefer that, like, people liked me today more, but then again, people kind of suck sometimes. So this I, is this is what we've been given. All right, it's so just you, me, and the wheel. Makes all right, three. so since, since the wheel likes you, I guess you'll no. choose a Lady Bing winner, and I'm guessing... Uh, Watch the wheel will grant me great karma now and will tell me I'm wrong. But uh, no, I'm going with Ryan O'Reilly based off of that prior reason I gave. Okay. So they have Barkov, Monahan, and O'Reilly. Yep. Just to read those out for you because we are also doing audio. Yep. <laughs> do, 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 and do, do, hey, do, do, do. nope, you're wrong. It, it decided to spite you. Well, but I did predict that would be wrong. Yes, um, but it's Sh Sean that Monahan right. that hey, won your name. the Lady Bing, according to the wheel. Yeah, but about time that the pl the Flames won something significant in the postseason. <laughs> oh my! Prove to me I'm wrong. I mean, I can't really do that. <laughs> well. Not yet. We'll, we'll circle back to this in a few weeks after that award show happens. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll see the wheel when this actually happens because it definitely will. <laughs> All right, man. Uh, next just like how we'll... Chicago State definitely won the Final Four. <laughs> anyway, uh, good times. Next award, Masterton. Uh yeah. So this is the award that definitely needs to not be called that. I mean, uh, it's Nick Foligno. It's, a, really, Hold it's on. a stupid name for a trophy. The for, Master Team. For the listening audience, it's Nick Foligno, Robin Leonard, and Joe Thornton. I'm, I'm, an, an, I'm anti-Robin Leonard, and it's not because of the Penguins Islanders thing. It's because it's a white guy with a back of his neck tattoo thing. All right, but I think Robin Leonard is going to win it. Well, I'm going with Joe Thornton because I still don't take the Blue Jackets seriously in my infinite wisdom. <laughs> All right. We'll see. Does the wheel uh, take the Blue Jumbo Jacket seriously? Jumbo Joe has a beard as big as his chance. The wheel does not take the Blue Jacket seriously in their infinite wisdom. They gave you, the wheel gave you Nailed the it. correct answer again in Joe Thornton. The beard knows. Not my beard, Joe Thornton's beard. It knows. <laughs> okay. And if it was any longer, it might have a nose. Ah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Nobody's safe. Oh, I'm going boy. after everybody. All right. All so, right. It's the next award. The Norris Trophy. By the way, we have to do something about this backdrop with the kids and the walking, the dog thing in the back. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. It's a great tunnel. It's just you and me on the walls and these people walking away from us. <laughs> yeah, eh, we'll figure that out later. Yeah. All right. Do, do, so do, do, the do, Norris do, Trophy, do, though, Brent do. Burns, Mark Giordano, and Victor Hedman. All right. Well, in my, in my callback kind of way, I will go with Mark Giordano as I chose him to win the All-Star Van Boden for uh, his division, and so here we are. He is amongst another Western Conference, you know, mm -hmm. guy, and Victor Hedman, and something tells me that the Kucherov winning is going to be the lone winner of awards that come out of Tampa Bay. So, um, all right, I mean, I can see that, but. Yeah, Edmund still it, had a pretty damn how, good season. It's just how award season works is not everybody sweeps everything off of one team. Yep, that's There's true. Some, there seems to be some balance to it, especially in a league like the NHL. It's not like the NBA. They do things a little bit more equally divided. Yeah, I, I don't know if you saw the, the ratings nope. between the NBA and NHL games. But we'll get to that later. Oh, really? I have not seen it, so I'm kind of curious now. All right, so let's just spin. Let the wheel tell us the answer. 
Sure. And the answer is, I guess the wheel spites you again because it's Victor Hedman. The wheel's about 500, which is more or less above my success odds in life, so. <laughs> oh, boy. Hey, buyer beware. That's all I'm saying. All right. Anyway, um, we have two more uh, two more awards to get to. Three more awards to get to. Three more. Uh, so can you believe, on to the, can you believe that we've gone through so many so quickly? Yeah, it's been pretty quick, man. I told you, we had 17 graphics for tonight, and you're like, shit, that's a lot. Anyway, so Ted Lindsay, um, we got, what, McDavid, uh, Kane? Who do we got? Um, Patrick Kane, I don't know why he's on this list. Um, <laughs> I mean, of the three teams, you have to think that the Blackhawks probably did the worst, right? Yeah. Or am I wrong? Eh. I could be wrong. I mean, I mean, basically, a stone's throw away from each other with the Edmonton thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll pick Kucherov. All right. So, out of McDavid, Kane, and Kucherov, you picking Kucherov? Well, I was about to pick Kane, but I just kind of like disputed that one pretty clearly, so I. <laughs> My only real informed decision that was left was to pick Kucherov, so here I am sticking to my guns. All right, let's see the wheel. Hey, and the wheel likes you because it picked Kucherov. The wheel has been so back and forth with me, it's like a girl that can't commit. Oh my god. <laughs> you know, it's true. They're all there. They're out there everywhere. I really like you, but, you know, I, I you know, own a Prius. It's like, what the fuck does that have to do with anything? But, okay. All right. Anyway, so now the Jack Not holding Adam. any grudges at all, by the way. Now the Jack Adams. Who do you give it to? Craig, Berube, John Cooper, or Barry Trotz? Well, we know that the NHL is all about hair, so... um. I'm I'm picking John Cooper just because of these three domes. He seemingly has the most on it. Oh my god! And that, that's hilarious. That's a guy with a, literally a thinking cap on. So for that reason, and that reason, I'm picking the best league record team in their coach. I don't think you can like. I see. I think it's a lot closer than people will think because the. Lightning are the yeah. best team, right? But so well, I'm no, gonna... but I think there's different angles you can come at it with. You can come at it with the Barry Trots, like, oh, they weren't supposed to be there with this team kind of thing. The Craig Barube and the Blues was the, you know, they came out of nowhere. They weren't going to make the playoffs and look where they are now yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Or you can go with just overall excess with the John Cooper thing. That's why Coach of the Year always is a little bit of a wash and a little bit of a mix-up and a, a more surprising is because you can come at it with multiple angles, whereas a lot of these other NHL t player awards, they're geared towards statistical differences of the same thing. Right, so I'm going to go with uh, Craig Berube from the Blues. Okay. I'll go with the Big Coop. All right, so who does the wheel favor? The big coop for sure. Actually, this wheel was completely balanced, but... They were all balanced. <laughs> the big coop won? <laughs> oh, yeah. I got a big coop. Oh, my God. You're doing pretty well with the wheel today. No, nope. Four and two. Yeah, that's pretty well. And I'm on a tape delay, too. So if <laughs> anyone thinks that I, you know, I have the answers... I really don't like... I'm seeing this after he says what happened. Yep. I right. watched the I watched the Twitch stream, too. I'm just like the fans. <laughs> what, what little they are. I'm sure they're fighting each other in the comments section about stupid shit. <laughs> anyway, so last... I, I, I had to hide the comment, you know, panel on this thing. It was like, it is, it's proven to be a distraction over the few episodes, so... Let me know if I'm missing out on anything. <laughs> anyway, 
So last last award, the Vesna. Um, ben Bishop, Robin Leonard, or Andre Vasilevsky. So you know that thing that I said, like Kucherov was going to be the only player to win an award. Mm-hmm. Well, in my anti Leonard stance, <laughs> um, I'm going to have to go with Vasilevsky, and because if when you think Dallas Stars, you don't think goaltending. Uh, I can't go with Ben Bishop, plus the fact that he's definitely missing teeth in this photo. <laughs> yes. So, Vasilevsky. All right, I'm going to go with Vasilevsky because I, despite how, like, Robin Leonard's story and all that, I don't think you can give it to him because I think they shared a little Look, bit it's a great time. story, but he was the one who was popping everything, so. And then, if you're going to give me a toss Just say no to drugs. Vasilevsky, then it's Vasilevsky. Yeah, it's not really much of a toss-up, but... Right, so does the wheel agree with us? Probably not. (laughs) The wheel chooses Robin Leonard. That (laughs) asshole. Oh. So, yeah, I mean, that's surprising. Why do you think the wheel chose Robin Leonard? Because he really wanted Thomas Grace to win, but because Robin Leonard took his job... He okay. was like, you know, all root for the Islanders for once. Okay. okay. That's definitely how it happened. You know it's true. <laughs> well, sure, we'll go with that. The wheel, in its infinite wisdom, wanted an Islander to win. Robin Leonard looks like someone I know from college who's just, like, never got to the age of maturity. It's the baby fa- the ultimate baby face, but it's also, like, this really stupid mug that just makes me want to throw at it. <laughs> oh my god. Alright, so let's move away from that mug. And uh, I guess we're hitting up football right now. Speaking of, you know, physical affection. Um, <laughs> apparently, Sean, your team's GM loves their new pick, their new toy. You know, which is, you know, every NFL team... They, they make a toy selection at the draft. Um, and with the number six pick, your GM, David Gettleman, or was it Daniel or David? David same Gettleman. Different. Sure. So uh, he he picked Daniel Jones, the the quarterback out of, of all places for football, Duke. Because when you think Duke, you think football, I guess. Yep. I mean, I didn't think that Duke was even in the ACC for football, but... <laughs> Lo and behold, they are. Um, and so, uh, number one reason they chose Daniel Jones is oh, absolutely, that be, yeah, that. because Daniel Jones looks seventy-five percent at least like Eli Manning does. Yeah, it really is. I mean, they they got a clone or a duplicate, or I mean, it's really going to be. I think he's a perfect guy to, you know, change hands with Eli Manning. Because, like I said, they're the same person, really. Neither one of them has is not prone to throwing interceptions. They both throw their fair amount. They'll both throw just as many touchdowns as interceptions, and not necessarily slice up the yards. Um, so it, it's a little interesting that um, this was a selection. But then uh, your your GM went one step further, and he said in a conference after the selection, like that he really loved Daniel Jones, and was like for, and he said like something along the lines of like forgive me for loving a guy so much that like I picked him sooner than expected, which really makes me feel like the way he said it was borderline like he actually wants some action with Eli Manning, Daniel Jones, and him in the same room. Oh my god, no. I did not need that image in my brain. What, you don't think that Gettleman wants to make smoochy smoochy with his new boy oh toy? Oh my god. You know it's gonna happen. Uh, but like, dude, this guy happen. wasn't even projected to go in like the second round. Yes, he was. What, is it mid-second round or something like that? No, it was going to go, like, mid-first round. Oh, really? Probably mid or late first round. Okay. I, the I, big, I was hearing the big second problem round. With, 
No, the big problem with him was that uh, Haskins went after Jones. Yes, but that's it was going to be Gettleman. Haskins should have gone before Jones. Jones, see, Jones probably could have slipped to the second round because you know the Redskins maybe would not have taken Jones, and after that, not a lot of teams needed a quarterback. Correct, but in a sense of talent, I mean, him and Drew Locke probably should have gone in the first round. All right. I mean, because I was hearing that, like, he shouldn't have really gone until the early second. I mean, I can see that, but I don't know. Something, at the end of the day, if I'm being truly serious about it, if a quarterback out of Duke is projected to be in the top two rounds, there's a reason for it. And there's a special kind of talent there that, you know, warrants that. Whereas... I mean, any other year, you've never heard of the other quarterbacks from Duke. So, I mean, there, there's there got to be something behind the guy. But do you think he was would have been available around 17? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and this whole, this whole thing that Gettleman's doing now where he's like, I know for a fact that two teams were going to take him if it wasn't for us before 17. No. No. And teams came out like maybe the Redskins and that was it. Teams came out and was like, not us. Well yeah, no. You know who really should have taken him was Cincinnati. Oh. But Cincinnati was hell bent on getting the linebacker you know, the Steelers jumped them to get that guy that they drafted. Mm -hmm. But Cincinnati needs to move on from Dalton. They can't I mean and he's had good years, but he's but I just mean, like every other Bengals quarterback. I mean, he's had good years, but he hasn't had much around him. Much. Like, he's had In terms of, of offense? No. Like, overall, like, defense. He's had some offense. Oh, but, yeah. But no, like, offense, he's had it. Yeah, sure. he's had some offense, but defense, like, are you kidding me? They might as well have just rolled over. <laughs> Yeah, well, if Vontez Perfect saw someone else roll over, you know. <laughs> but now he's in Oakland, so they needed a linebacker. And I guess replacing Vontez Perfect with a first rounder, I think they thought would have been like an equal trade off, which is like, no, it would have been better because, you know, you'd get the guy who isn't a criminal on the field. <laughs> All right. All right. Moving on from this picture <laughs> hey it could be a lot more intimate than it looks <laughs> all right so next we got nba playoffs all right, the basketball and uh you know the sports that we do not watch um <laughs> yeah the nets kind of lost and we both lost interest hey they they won uh, it was they won the, on the first day of the playoffs and that was the last time i watched the game <laughs> yeah i mean good on them the for nets winning. are undefeated good on them for winning a game like you really didn't expect them to make the playoffs even at the six you like they should have won game four too yeah got screwed by the refs anyway we're here to talk about the second round yeah so what do you think of milwaukee boston uh see i think that a lot of people are overreacting back that the boston celtics won game one and they think all of a sudden that it's not going to be a series Right. I think it's it's going to be a series. Um, that one probably goes six or seven. Okay. Uh, it, Golden State Houston probably goes uh, a full seven because in years past, it always seems to go seven between those two. I mean, also with the way Golden State played last series. I mean, the Clippers did push them to six games. Let's right. not fool ourselves. Yeah, they pushed them to six games, but I mean, there was a lot of things that I felt like Golden State just also didn't really help their case. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. No, I'll agree with that. Uh, Portland and Denver, as it starts tonight, uh, on uh, Monday night tonight. Um, so that I think that one has the potential to be a really good and entertaining series, as does Philly and Toronto. Philly and Toronto, it's a little weird because Philly's got, like, the balanced kind of stacked team. 
Or is Toronto just has like uh, Leonard and every well, it's Leonard and everybody else. Yeah, lopsided. Yeah, but you know Toronto's up one game to nothing in the series. So, all right, do do do. You know, that was my Twilight Zone impression. You know, it's a little a little mysterious. Do 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 do. <laughs> yeah. All right. Anyway, copyright so, infringement at its finest. So I think we're is after this we're visiting our city. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's get into it. Speaking of Boston based, because we haven't touched on that in a while, between the hockey's and the basketballs, we're we're into uh, our segment of crap you can get on Facebook Marketplace. But we're going to start with the one good thing that you can get in Boston. Like, (laughs) this is the one cool thing. And props to those who make hockey jerseys for for the other sports teams. Because hockey jerseys look cool regardless of anything. So you got your your Gronk hockey jersey. Your, uh, I'm guessing this is Boston... Patriots, six-time Super Bowl champs yep. jersey. You got your Larry Bird uh, Celtics one. So they're really cool, although the Celtics logo is kind of small, and I really don't need the GE logo on my hockey jerseys. But, um, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah it's cool. But if you're in Boston, it's only cool for Boston teams. And we'll get into that on the next slide here because um, – yeah, I you'll mean, you'll see where the fit kind of fades. Yeah, so what do you think of the price though? I I think it's like decent for 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 custom stuff like that. Ninety nine is because you know this stuff is stitched. Yeah. No one made no one ironed on numbers like that. No, no. Ninety nine. You know, yeah. I mean, you know, give it to me for seventy, and I'm like bragging to everybody about the deal I got. Ninety nine is still not bad. Yeah, I I'd agree. All right, so let's get to that next slide where things get a, a bit weird. Yeah, so let, let's start in the center here. Uh, the Khalil Mack hockey jersey. <laughs> you got to know your market. And notice how there's only a $4 price reduction compared to the Boston stuff. So, again, nowhere near Illinois. Yeah. You got to know your market. Again, it's a nice jersey, but you're in the wrong place. Um, So then we'll go to this Bape jersey, which I guess is like a clothing line. It's like a bathing ape is the company or something, which look, I guess this is just where you and me, we're not fashionable people. <laughs> um, That we just don't need a Celtics jersey with an ape on it. Um. <laughs> Uh, unless I'm missing some inside joke or something like this, where something's going on that I definitely was not informed to. No one put up flyers. No one was hanging up signs. I don't know. This is probably like a running. Someone created a, a clothing line off of the Harambe thing or something, didn't they? Um, and yeah, this fifty dollars for an animal on my Celtics jersey? No. <laughs> you can forget about that. Spend your money wisely if you're going to be a wholesaler. This is not how you do it. All right. And then we have the $60 Cactus Jack Rockets jersey. No idea what any of these words mean, but they are <laughs> words. They are words that someone assembled in a title sequence. So this basically, the way I told Sean before the show, is someone found like a really old replica jersey and they were like coloring book and they decided to draw whatever the hell that was uh just a planet with you know spinning a ball i mean um they, on the jersey they, they yeah, covered yeah. the houston so much that they had to put it on there <laughs> again but it, no they also wrote the word rockets two more times on the yellow line coming out the uh, jetpack that go over the number as if you didn't know who the team was is like, Oh, I knew that they were from Houston, but are they the Rockets? No, they're the Rockets and the Rockets two times. Don't get it wrong ever again. 
<laughs> so yeah, you, this is a definite definite waste of money, especially in Boston, Massachusetts. I don't know why you're spending sixty dollars to get your shirt colored so, on, but hold on. Bape jersey or Cactus Jack X B N R Rockets jersey. Oh, are we talking about like which one am I gonna burn? <laughs> which one out of those two, if you had to spend your money, would you spend it on? I'd spend it on the Cactus Jack jersey. And the reason? Oh, because I just think that the Celtics one is like so far gone into a world that's like not even basketball that it doesn't make sense. Whereas like whatever is going on on the Houston jersey, it still kind of ties into the NBA to the loosest extent. All right. Look, the Boston Celtics mascot was never a monkey or a gorilla or whatever. <laughs> or an ape, whatever. Um, whereas the fucking jetpack planet thing, I can still tie that to the Rockets to some loose degree. All right. All right. So anyway, let's move on. To now, the- am I wearing that to meet people? No. no. It's, like, it's like a sleep shirt. <laughs> Even if I wear it. Oh, uh, you gotta love those Boston people. So corny and stupid. Anyway, let's move on. Less than others. But so great. lovable because I know so many of them and don't want to eat my words too much. All right, so. Oh, no, we have more after this one. Oh, yeah. This was, I mean, it didn't take long to di- dig deep for Boston. The Toronto one took like an hour, but this one was. Like, yeah, like a solid mine. ten minutes. <laughs> gold mine. Oh yeah. So uh, for all you basketball fans who have trouble making shots, uh, you know I can speak as one who's trying to fix my jump shot. There's no better way to say I never miss than to buy yourself a backboard with the rim that isn't there, and no thing to put it on. No, well, there's nothing better than a a wet jumper that goes <laughs> off glass every time. And why why stop it going off glass and like going into a rim or going into the hoop? Just go off glass every time with this lifetime twenty dollar backboard. And lifetime, I certainly is an ironic brand name in this regard because if you look closely, it definitely looks like the rim broke. <laughs> definitely. All right, so moving on, you can either spend your $20 on your broken hoop or you can get yourself a vinyl record of the Boston Celtics not-to-be-denied championship run from the 70s, I believe. Now, why this is a thing really puzzles me. Why do you need a vinyl record basically narrating and telling you what happened in a championship run? Makes no sense. I mean, we barely watch the championship run DVDs these days. And now we're going to go back into the vault. Let's break, break out the audio only. It's like it's an audio book for something that happened, but it's like, Put it on a record player, and this thing will last significantly less time than an audiobook, and it will tell less of a story. All right. And uh, if you had a little bit more than $20 to spend, you could obviously just go for the thing right next to it. Yeah. So this is kind of – I kind of admire the, the throw salt in the wound insult that they tried to do here saying that this was a New York Yankees jersey, which clearly it's not because the Yankees don't sport a color scheme of chocolate brown, gray, and orange. orange. Um, so we either have the most misinformed baseball fan of all time. Which you're in or, Boston, so you shouldn't be. <laughs> right. If you're in Boston, you at least know the rivalry. Yeah. Um, so... There's either that or someone's really just throwing a shit ton of shade. Um, But yeah, this jersey, it better be in excellent condition because, again, it's not from a real team. (laughs) 
So no one's just walking around Massachusetts with my basic New York City baseball uniform with no player on the back. And trust me, there's no player on the back. I looked at the pictures. So uh, I think $28 is a little bit of a markup. You might have to take that thing to Marshalls and get it, you know, see if they can trade it in for $6, like up at the, the Game Stops and stuff. I mean, like, also, I feel like if you're putting anything on sale that is Yankees or labeling it even Yankees in Boston, you are you should have to discount it like 200%. Right. $28 is probably the peak of anything Yankees in, in like, Boston. like, signed Babe Ruth jersey probably goes for $28 in Boston. <laughs> and that's like the peak of the marketplace up there for New York sports memorabilia in which a rivalry is involved. Yeah. All right. So All right. Let's get Let's to move on to the thing. final two. Yep. If you're going to go bargain bin hunting, this is not the town for you. <laughs> because they really think that they're pulling fast ones on you with really stupid shit. Why don't you give yourself $10 worth of basketballs? But when you look really closely... These are trash basketball. Someone used the ball, and now there's no grip left, and it looks like maybe dumped a few paint cans on it, maybe scuffed it up with a few cars, and now they're trying to sell, sell the basketball to you for 10 bucks. No. <laughs> Throw them out. Be a grown-up. Cut your losses. The... There's better ways to make money than this. What about that nice $20 basketball? Well, you know, it's great in theory, except this basketball is clearly older than, you know, some rocks. Um, <laughs> so this is a David Robinson Franklin basketball. Now, Franklin being that brand of stuff that you used as a kid and never any time since then. Um so David Robinson, obviously a great player in the 90s, but the thing is he played in San Antonio. Um, so if you're looking for this ball to be like a decorative item, again, we're in the wrong market. We're in, we're in Massachusetts here. Um, but this ball also looks to be a bit worn, and you can just tell looking at it, this is one of those cheapo basketballs that is it the grip on it doesn't last this is not a 20 dollar ball but hey, i'd say it's a five dollar ball at best it has grip in some spots yes <laughs> if i look at the black stripes there's no there's already wear and tear oh yeah so in some spots yes there's grip other spots where there probably should be there isn't Probably. And I'd like to just inform both of the sellers from this page to get a grip on your life because this is really sad. <laughs> it, it may be more sad than selling your New York baseball jersey for $28 in Boston. <laughs> it's really, that's, that's our toss up of the day. Is which one is more sad? Selling old basketballs or or merchandise in the wrong market where you clearly are not going to get money for it. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I hope you liked that. The, some of those things are like, what? Yeah. Fuck the bathing ape. I'll say it. We don't have sponsors anyway, at least not right now. And they wouldn't be one. <laughs> Anyway, yeah. I mean, so, it's really it's really stupid what this world has come to. <laughs> As Jeremy it's really goes on his rant, uh, I please mean, please God, let me get away from my coworkers. <laughs> hey, hey, why aren't you playing praying to the wheel? The wheel has sacrificed itself for my existence. <laughs> Except not because I birthed the wheel. The wheel is my offspring. <laughs> All right, well. I do it for the children, a.k.a. the wheels. Oh, my God. Yeah, that was tying it all back now. Makes a ton of sense. All right, well, 
yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. We'll be back in a week. Thank you for listening. And don't forget to vote for your local somethings. Okay.